tennis shoes out today. Greg, um, obviously making the playoffs was the, the first goal now. You have a real chance at, at improving maybe your standing, uh, getting a home game. How important is getting a home game to this team? Yeah, I think it's it's important. I mean, it's a, a goal of ours. We'd love to give our fans another game. Um, also, I think it's momentum is precious in MLS. And so, you know, we've been on a good stretch over this last set of games. And we want to play well, we want to perform, we want to get a good result. Um, certainly we would like to get home field advantage. There's a lot of reasons for us to go out and uh, really focus with the right mentality and, and approach this game as if it's a, a playoff game, right? To, to be in the right mindset. You don't get times to have a, you don't get time to have a lull and try to get yourself back when, when uh, we only have one game in front of us between now and the playoffs. So it's, it's uh, the guys are focused and um, they're preparing for this weekend in the right way. Houston has been on a, a better stretch, I guess, since yeah. they got eliminated, certainly not playing like a, a team that's eliminated. Sure. What do you expect from them uh, in, in this game? Yeah, I think they'll continue to do what they've what they've been doing, which is uh, they're stretching themselves out at time, using their athleticism and speed, trying to get pressure on the ball, uh, trying to turn you over in, in areas of the field where they can use that in transition. Um, they're trying to get out on top of the game, it looks like. If they have to, they'll, they'll get under the ball. But uh, I think they've been playing like a team who has not a whole lot to lose, but can, uh, can go out and really try to maybe express themselves, push themselves against the opposition and, and go for the game. And, you know, they've been able to get themselves on top of some of these games, which is, you know, also played into their favor because they are a good, for me, they're one of their best qualities is in the transition. And so um, when you can get on top of games and you, you can get other teams spread out and, and uh, find some more transition moments. So they, they've looked solid and uh, it'll be a good, a good game for us because, I, again, I don't think there'll be a team that comes back, comes out and just sits back. I think they'll come out and look to uh, impress their fans and go for it and, uh, and, and play the game straight up. Because when you first played them, they sort of punished you guys with their transition. They did, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, but you guys are a different group. How do you sort of think this group now compared, can handle what, they, what they're going to bring in here? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good uh, it's a good challenge for us. They did punish us uh, in the last in the last game uh, in transitions. We lost balls sometimes poorly. We weren't ready for some of the moments that we didn't handle well. I think we need to be more mature. Uh, we need to show that growth. We need to obviously when we do have possession or stretches of possessions, we need to make sure that we stay disciplined and that we manage the transitions. Guys like Pico, who will he'll 50-50 defend, you know, he's, he's clever. He'll defend when he really needs to defend, but he'll, he'll cheat the transition and he's got a ton of pace and, and he's, he's a hard guy to get a hold of in the attack. And you have Quintero who is slippery and, and he'll do the same thing. He'll defend when he feels like he's really needed and then he'll look for the transition ball when, when he feels like he's not. So these are guys you have to keep a, keep a track of. And uh, for us, it, we'll find out again, what's our discipline, what's our security with the ball uh, you know, for us, it's to continue to be attacking oriented and not just possession oriented. Sometimes, you know, it's not allowing ourselves to get too comfortable on the ball, but to really try to finish our attacks and make the opposition make plays in front of their goal. Get when we finish attacks deep in their half, it's much harder to transition out of those those situations. So, uh, th those are some things that we need to to work through. And I think just our defensive, our collective defending, just again, managing different situations. As I said to the guys today, when you get to the playoffs, you get the extremes of everything that you see during the course of an MLS season. You know, uh, I don't know if we'll get extremes against uh, Houston specifically, but we need to be able to, again, prepare ourselves mentally for those kinds of things. Once you put emotion, once you put the elimination on the line, all those kinds of things. So we just want to be in the right mindset as we work through this weekend and, and uh, venture towards the playoffs. Mark and Julian both spoke about their relationship in the game with each other. You know, Mark trying to tell Julian, like, mm -hmm. hey, you can trust that I'll cover you mm -hmm. when you make those runs up. I guess, what have you noticed about the way their partnership has evolved over the course of the season? Yeah, I think, again, I think uh, as Mark has come back healthy in this last stretch of games, Jules, for me, has gotten more comfortable. Uh, he looks more certain. He looks more confident that he can... He can get into the attack with some freedom and that somebody is going to cover him, that he's not going to have to you know, race back. We also have Sega on alert who can cover ground to make sure that they cover behind Jules when he takes has those moments. But just also for Jules, like choosing the right moments. You know, sometimes I think 
earlier in his in the season he will just set up in high positions and then if the ball transitioned he would be out of the play already now i think he's joining in at the right times uh, which is allowing for some interchange to happen he's not just st standing up in a high position so i think the timing is getting better the trust is getting better uh, i think our responsibility behind the ball has improved which uh, which means all of those things can be a little bit more fluid the timing's been better uh, which has given Jules more opportunity in the crossing uh, and the final action, I think, over this last little series of games than he had for a stretch there. But some of it, too, is I feel like he, he seems more at ease and more confident right now than, say, he did in a little bit of a middle stretch of the season. And on a lighter note, uh, both, both guys also talked about the personality of the French guys in your, in your locker room yeah. and how, <laughs> how they're nonstop. And uh, I don't know, what, what have you observed of, of that camaraderie? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a funny group of guys who uh, they spend a lot of time together. But each of their personalities is just so different. And Sam is like the lightning bolt for everything. You know, every all all the banter. He's he's the middle of it. They're always teasing Sam, and he's taking it and trying to give it back. Sega is kind of the old wise soul of the group. That is, uh, you know, very calm and and very like just adult like uh and kevin just he just winds up sam and and he's kevin's just he's kind of quiet in a way but he has his way of constantly poking at sam and it just it's just non-stop these guys are non-stop and other guys start to get into it because uh, they realize that sam is uh reacts a lot to things and so then you can't do that in a locker room or else for sure you're gonna get it so uh, so a lot of guys will feed into that and, and Douglas and Sam have a great relationship in terms of banter and competition and stuff like that. So yeah, it's evolved as guys settle in and get to understand each other's personalities. And uh, so it's, they, they can make it fun sometimes for sure. This has always seemed to be a locker room that gets along. Uh, hasn't always been the past, been the, been the same around here, but how has that helped this group sort of turn things around here lately? Yeah, good. I think there's a good balance of youth and maturity now. I think, uh, you know, guys who are super professional, but also guys who, who also kind of just have joy in, in their every day. There's like a nice mix of, of that, which makes for a good locker room. And I think it's not easy sometimes for guys who speak different languages to really get to know each other. And sometimes that takes experiences. Sometimes you have to dig in a little bit deeper. Uh, our guys have been able to, I think, through this course of really the last almost two years with this group that guys are starting to learn a little bit more about where each other come from and what makes each other tick and what's important about for each other. And I think once you invest in each other like that, then you realize you all have the same goals. You all want the same end game. You're all in it together and you just start to learn a little bit more about each other, which, you know, helps, helps everybody to, to move forward. And it's a good group of guys. Like there's nobody in there that's, you know, an ass or anything like that. Every, everybody's a good guy. And then once they just get to know each other, then it, it, it will, it plays itself out, you know, and they have some games that they do in the locker room two touch and other things that they do that create some, some banter and energy inside there as well. Greg, um, we talk about mentality and consistency during the, the season. Is there something that you have learned about this team, especially, uh, you know, this entire season? Yeah, you know, I think um, it's stuff that we knew. I think our additions to our team have really helped uh, the consistency of our group. Uh, some of it's just like an emotional consistency. Some of it is just uh, getting from week to week, game to game, um, you know, performance consistency, things like that. So there's the group, I think, is really has grown from that capacity. Uh, look over this last 10, 11 games, our results, we've, we've dropped one, uh, you know, which there's other games, there's games inside of there where we maybe should have solidified three points and we didn't. Uh, there's games where we came back and picked up a point. So I think there's, again, there's more trust, there's more belief, there's more clarity, there's more of the, all those things that tend to late lead you towards consistency. Um, and again, starting to understand each other a little bit more. But I think the personalities that we added, Martin is like ice cold, right? Like he just this all the time, which gives you just a little bit more. I think that's helped guys like Derek and Sega as well. Uh, and our other guys back there, Gaston is very similar, just a, just a man and professional and been around and he helps bring. So the balance between our youth, because we built with a lot of youth uh, when we started to put this team together last year. And now I think we just have a, that balance between Guys who just who professional have had professional long stable careers who are also providing stability for the guys around them. So, 
uh, as far as the, the playoffs, do you like the format uh, of the what, knockout? What, uh, what are your thoughts? Just like playing the entire match in one game. Yeah, I, I, I really personally, I really liked the home and away. Like for me, that is that was outstanding because it's kind of even in a way and you and you can play both ends of it and you can feel the first game out and know what you need in the second. I, I really enjoy that. I think that's the best side of it. This is I don't necessarily think the best team wins in this type of scenario. I think you get, you know, uh, one play, one call, one one mistake, one something can be the difference. And, and so I, I really think this is a tournament, you know, and, and the purest of the sense. I think the home and away gives you really the best chance of getting the best team out at the end of at the end of it all. So, um, but it is it is what it is. So you know now we really have to be consistent. We have to really decrease our mistakes. We have to play with intelligence. So you learn all of the things that you learn about your group. And now it's actually, as I said to the guys today, like tournament play is very different than league play. And only one Supporter Shield winner in the last 10 years has won a championship. So it doesn't really matter what you do in the regular season. It's really, can you now adapt to what tournament play is going to look like? Uh, you've seen Portland over the years be very good at tournament play, not be the best team in, in necessarily in league play. But it, it's, it's a different uh, can of worms sometimes. And you just, you got to be able to adapt now into that, that mindset of every play matters and every little situation is matters. And, risk reward, all those kinds of things are just heightened now that, that you get into that. Plus the emotion of the stadium and both teams, uh, all is going to be a different. So it, it, it's exciting, no doubt. It creates excitement. I think maybe it creates excitement for the fans that you get a whole game is like do or die. For me, it's a little stressful, but not. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, I, I liked the two. We were very successful in the past with the two legs and being able to adapt depending on what the score was and things like that. So, but it, we are where we are and it'll be fun. So, any thoughts on the, the one seed coming down to play the four or five and not necessarily the, the lowest seed? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, ultimately when you win the top seed, you want to play the lowest, theoretically you would want to play the lowest seed team and you just adapt along the way. So this is, uh, I guess, just a bracket style and you just roll with it. So uh, I don't know if it gives the top team the greatest advantage, but I really do think once you get to this point, they're, what you want is maybe home field advantage, and then you just have to deal with whoever comes your way. And uh, so, I could I see uh, I could see the the number one seed wanting the lowest team, but I'm not sure how much it matters in the grand scheme of things. It might, but it's marginal. So, awesome. All right. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Uh, with there being a home match, is there a message oh. to the fans that are going to be watching from afar that you want to give? If it with what? A message to the fans that are watching from afar. Okay, for Houston? Yeah. Or just but like for our home base here, like a message to our fans? Yeah. For this weekend or yeah, for, for this the weekend. future? Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, from from the players and all of us, the staff, and I think everyone, I can speak for everyone in this building, we're just, we're really grateful that we have the fans and the support and they're behind us. It was amazing the other night to, to have a full stadium and the energy in the stadium and to be able to give the fans back what they should get, which is a, is the playoff appearance. Uh, now we're going to Houston to uh, to try to give them what they deserve, also, which is a home playoff game. And you know that's that's our uh, that's our focus. And we we will feel their support while we're in Houston, and uh, we'll try to be back here next weekend with a game for you in front of you. And we'll look forward to that opportunity. And can't even imagine what the buzz in the stadium is going to be like uh, if we can pull that one off.